has been regularly organizing 20 endowment lectures every year and Dr. Koka Krishna Mohan Rao Endowment Lecture, Engineer J.V. Stubbara Endowment Lecture, and Engineer T. Anmant Rao Endowment Lecture, Engineer A.P. Ranganath Swami Endowment Lecture, Dr. S. Raghavachari Endowment Lecture, Dr. Narla Tata Rao Endowment Lecture, Engineer Matur Gopal Rao Endowment Lecture, Gurram Kodredi Endowment Lecture, Atluri Venkateshwar Rao Endowment Lecture, Dr. A. John Endowment Lecture, Dr. N. V. R. L. N. Rao Endowment Lecture, Engineer S. L. Venkatakrishna Iyer, K. V. Srinivas Rao, and M. L. Swami Endowment Lecture, Dr. A. Ramakrishna Endowment Lecture, and Engineer I. Basavaraju Endowment Lecture. Yes, I take this opportunity to say a few words about the veteran eminent engineer, Dr. Narla Tata Rao. Dr. Narla Tata Rao, born on September 4th, 1917 completed his B.Sc. in Electrical and Mechanical Engineering from the Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, and a diploma from the Jamshedpur Technological Institute of Tata Iron and Steel Company Limited, Jamshedpur. Dr. Tata, uh, Dr. Narla Tata Rao then did his M.S. in the Power Systems Engineering from the Linas Institute of Technology, Chicago. The Jawaharlal Nehru University, Hyderabad, later confirmed on him the honorary degree of Doctor of Science. Dr. Rao served Madhya Pradesh Electricity Board from 1948 to 1972 in various capacities, right from divisional engineer to the vice chairman. Dr. Tata Rao built the Madhya Pradesh Electricity Board as an NBS organization. He then worked as member thermal during the 1972-74 with the Central Water and Power Commission, Government of India. Dr. Narla Tata Rao has also been the president of the Central Board of Irrigation and Power, New Delhi, during the years 1976-1979 and chairman of the National Council of Power Utilities during the year 1982-1988. He also served the Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board as its chairman during the year 1974 to 1988. Dr. Tata Rao became synonymous to the energy sector in Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Tata Rao increased the installed capacity of the state grid fivefold by conceiving joint generation projects like Vijayawada Thermal Station, Nagajan Sagar, Sri Salem, and Lower Silero. Ideal power projects. He formed a strong base for the state's electricity sector, which is now considered one of the best in the country. Dr. Tata Rao was also chairman Energy Research Committee of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, New Delhi, and also chairman of the expert group on development of power technology, planning commission, government of India, member expert committee on the Enron project, Government of Maharashtra and as consultant to the Asian Development Bank on the reorganization of Bangladesh Power Development Board. In the year 1992, he was appointed as advisor on power to the Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister of the then Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Satara won several awards at national and international levels and also brought laurels to the engineering profession and also the motherland. Tatarao has been recipient of the Golden Jubilee Award of the CBIP New Delhi for the year 1978 and the President of India conferred on him Padma Sri in the year 1983. He was also recipient of Bharat Ratna Sir Moshagundam Visvesaraya Award instituted by the Government of Andhra Pradesh and the Institution of Engineers India AP State Center in the year 1985 and the Om Prakash Basin Award in the year 1986. The IBPL Uzra Research Foundation, Mumbai selected Dr. Rao as the Energy Man of the Year for the year 1995. The Institution of Engineers honored him with the 
honorary life fellow of iei in the year 1997 during the 12th indian engineering congress held in bangalore dr tata rao always stood behind us in all our end years such as world energy congress and etc dr tata rao always used to mention that the honorary life uh, life fie conferred on him by iea is higher than any other honor we river engineering legendary of the era dr narla tata rao who made laudable contribution in the power sector and brought laurels to the engineering profession the tributes we can pay to dr narla tata rao is to emulate his qualities and follow his footsteps today telangana state center arranged dr narla tata rao 22nd endowment lecture on field computation in electrical engineering using fem by dr s rinwas reddy professor in pe and principal of cmr engineering college hyderabad i am sure you are waiting to hear his talk from this eminent speaker i am limiting myself and hope that you will really enjoy the talk on behalf of the telangana state center of iei and on my own behalf i once again extend a hearty welcome to the eminent speaker dr s rinwas reddy professor in triple e and principal cmr engineering college and all of you to this important event thanks one and all now may I request to engineer thank srinivas acharya thank you thank you thank you thank you sir to kindly introduce uh, dr a s reddy garu before he, it uh, starts his uh, talk over to srinivas acharya garu sir thank you sir thank you president uh, chairman sir uh, good evening to all it is a uh, customary and uh, our responsibility and uh, it's uh, my privilege to introduce today's speaker dr a s rinwas reddy fie professor in uh, electrical and electronic engineering and a principal cmr engineering college hyderabad uh, for today's uh, lecture field competitions in electrical engineering using fem One minute. Just one minute, sir. Hold it. Uh, mm -hmm. Doctor A. C. Nivas Reddy, a name which spells supreme quality in the fields of academics and administration, has been rendering his untiring services as the principal of CMR Engineering College for the past eleven years. He is a PhD electrical engineering holder with a vast teaching and administrative experience of over 25 years in the educational sector he is ratified as a professor and a principal by jntuh an able visionary administration has enabled him to excel in his leadership role and helped in establishing cmr uh, cmr engineering college to a position of pre eminent within a few years excelling in various engineering disciplines he played a pivotal role in, in the college for the accreditation process of ugc autonomous uh, conferment national board of accreditation and national assessment and accreditation council nag uh, iso under 2f 12b certificate uh, certifications over the years under his able vision guidance professional integrity vibrant competence and energy have helped the CMR Engineering College to become as a one of the top engineering colleges in the state of Telangana. Mm -hmm. He always believes in five P's, which includes placements, publications, projects, patents, and a participatory administration for the sustenance of the institution. Mm -hmm. He has received six national awards for his tremendous service, mm -hmm. which include best principal mm -hmm. award from MSME. Indira Gandhi Seva Ratna, Shining Image of India, Bharat Gaurav, Bharat Siksha Ratan Award, and Rashtriya Vidya Saraswati Puraskar in the field of education. He has published two national and one international book. Reviewer for MC Girl, uh, RBA publication, uh, IJ IJERT, etc. Presently under his supervision. eight research scholars are working for their phd he has contributed more than 55 research 
papers in SCI under Scopus Index and UGC recognized international and national journals and conferences. He has 10 research uh, patents. With this uh, brief introduction, I conclude uh, introduction of our today's speaker, Srinivas already, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, over to uh, President, you. sir, for further continues. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, Chairman, sir, please continue. Sir, 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 please continue. Ready, sir. Thank you. Oh, yes, sir. Good, 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 sir. good evening, good evening, one and all, sir. Good evening, one and all. Uh, myself, Dr. A.S. Reddy, A.S. Srinivas Reddy, Principal of CMR Engineering College. I'm very glad uh, to be associated with the Institution of Engineers, myself being a corporate member of this FIE. Uh, so, with the due respect to all the honorable delegates in this, uh, this meeting. Uh, right from our uh, Honorable Chairman, Ramaradi sir, and uh, Secretary sir, and uh, all other distinguished uh, members and the participants. I am very much here, uh, delighted and honored to present this particular lecture. Uh, yeah, uh, especially uh, a young budding engineer like me, who has been just uh, there in the field of uh, just uh, teaching for the past uh, two decades. I am really happy to to address uh, the eminent engineers across the institution of engineers. Mm, I just would like to focus uh, uh, very few points. It's uh, being uh, an innovative and uh, relatively new field for uh, electric and electronics engineers, what I am going to talk about today. It is all about uh, field computations uh, in electrical engineering. Field computations, generally, we have just would have come across uh, any network uh, or uh, circuit engineers, we would have come across uh, two different theories. One is called uh, circuit theory, another one is called uh, field theory. Especially the general problems, any kind of problem, maybe right from simple circuits to the machines to the power system networks, we treat that uh, as a, one of the simple equivalent circuit. That means we go by circuit approach. That's where we find it convenient and also we are able to really get in our day-to-day -day work to the design works. That's where we all prefer going uh, by circuit theory. However, certain aspects which cannot be addressed by circuit theory can also be addressed uh, by field theory. Field theory approach, especially for example, uh, if I take a small example, like for example, I am just trying to choose the size of the conductor and uh, uh, placement of the conductors, I mean the distance between two conductors, this can be calculated by empirical formula, but uh, however, the exact placement of the conductor and the exact uh, insulation level is to be decided with a proper field evaluation. Like for example, you take a capacitor, between two plates of the capacitor, we are keeping the dielectric. Or between two conductors, whatever the amount of, I mean, distance that we are leaving, that means we are filling, we are having air insulation or some sort of a porcelain insulation. This is exactly, this is a very much influenced by the field distribution and its intensities. So these uh, aspects are, uh, I mean, it cannot be directly handled by circuit theory. So that's where uh, we need to really go for field theory and the field computation. Say, for example, between two plates of a capacitor, the field, uh, if it is, a if you just uh, think of a distribution, it is uh, from, from high potential plate to the lower potential plate. It, the distribution, if you see, the gradient is uh, very high at the uh, high potential uh, plate. That means uh, so whenever you just look into the, I mean, like a transmission or distribution system, see, nearer to the conductor, there will be more electric stress. Uh, and when you travel from the conductor to the earth point, uh, that the stress values will differ. That's where uh, we should plan for a proper grading of insulation also. So yes. these kind of aspects, uh, can be properly, scientifically calculated by using field Question. computations. These field computations, Question, uh, how, it, teacher, how it can be carried out, Question. how it can be carried out, and how the Question. field computations influence the design. So 
for example mm-hmm. if i am taking a cable mm-hmm. say from mm-hmm. conductor to the earth point the uh, electric field the distribution it uh, depends upon the size of the conductor mm-hmm. the material mm-hmm. nature mm-hmm. and the shape of the mm-hmm. conductor so as these kind of things uh, influences the uh, uh, really so the uh, design of the cable i mean say, okay. based upon the field distribution we have to grade the table and uh, we have to decide its uh, insulation levels and as well as uh, the material uh, yeah, so i'll just uh, try, try to show you some sort of uh, pictures yeah, it's 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 some sort, some kind of uh, idea for uh, all the uh, audience so i request uh, dr c yeah, ravi to present the ppt sir you share the ppt sir kindly uh, the sir. host member to give the permission sir give the permission sir. for sharing sir sir i uh, request Srinath the host sir garu could you please give yes, permissions yes, to yes, dr yes, c n ravi who is there yes, at the sir malu sir venkat subha yes, sir i request oh, sir ah uh, yes sir to pass uh, yes, pass yes, on the permission yes Yeah. Before we just uh, go for the presentation, I will also give you some more examples. Like for example, I am designing a transformer. The, the design of transformer, it is uh, done with, uh, say, we have our own design ca- methods and uh, calculations. Upon design also, just uh, we have found uh, one case study. For example, uh, from Crampton Greaves, uh, cgl uh, mumbai we just i mean uh, found one transformer that has been exported to south america and uh, there from the field they got the complaint that they, due to some thermal problems that is getting unnecessarily tripped that means there something there may be conventional design and uh, the care that has been taken but uh, in spite of all those things uh, the estimated loss it is causing the some overheating Uh, of course after sending uh, an engineer uh, from mumbai to south america that engineer could have able to tell only one aspect saying that say something uh, due to some thermal failure it is really getting affected of course that one word it may not uh, really help us uh, in rectifying the things but uh, in the design itself in the pre design in the pre implementation itself we should be able to really identify the problem i will tell you why the things uh, have gone wrong say certain aspects like uh, say we have different kinds of losses uh, copper losses and uh, iron losses in the transformer in the transformer these two losses are uh, calculated scientifically but beyond this there is one loss which is uh, at times i mean empirically calculated or otherwise uh, uh, it is uh, uh, underestimated it is nothing but stray losses see as the various components are in the transformer say other than core and the intended windings if you see the other parts like for example we are using some clamps so we are using some bolt and nut we are using some flitch plates to really hold the, uh, hold the core so that particular set of uh, things uh, are uh, also the materials which are uh, undergoing field variations that the field variation are the field linkage to all those uh, stray parts are causing some losses that loss is not accounted uh, in the conventional design so this particular loss it is causing at times uh, say some overheating uh, hot spot uh, uh, say that hot spot uh, it may be i mean overall temperature at times when you test uh, you will find overall temperature it is uh, under normal uh the limits but however that uh, hot spot temperature that means at some spots inside the transformer it may be getting overheated that hot spot yeah, it may aggravate as a incipient fault and uh, it may cause incipient fault and that incipient may uh, later develop as a say major fault so to really avoid all these things we should have proper prediction of uh, that the stray losses also so these kind of things can be taken care by this uh, field computation method so for this particular say this thing one should understand how to really work out the field computations in uh, electrical engineering so 
I just try to introduce you the need for this field calculations. Of course, uh, what kind of parameters means in electric field, we will just uh, mostly see the distribution of field intensity and in the magnetic field, the distribution of magnetic field. So, now I will just uh, tell you, say, need for field yeah so is it uh, that one need for field computations ravi sir mm. yes sir yeah here these are the examples like you know in the design of cable and, uh, especially multi portals and as well as uh, in designing uh, some hd insulators like uh, for example in hd insulators and bushings also the field distribution it really uh, affects uh, the uh, design of the insulator. So, where this particular field computation method, it helps us uh, to exactly design the shape and the size of the insulator and the type of material also. So, and uh, even we have seen transform bushing also. In designing the bushings also, so you, you, that shape and uh, the placement of that uh, conductor and the uh, corona rings, that uh, matters a lot. For example, when you are designing an insulator, uh, bushing or it may be a string of insulator say, to distribute that uh, field uh, in a uniform or what you call like in a safer this thing we design some corona rings i mean the decision making of uh, placement of corona ring under uh, this uh, shape and uh, the type of uh, corona ring also it needs uh, this kind of field competitions so uh, in designing corona rings also we need uh, these uh, field competitions Next, uh, in as I already iterated about uh, this particular transformer scale analysis. So uh, I think that also for exact uh, evaluation, evaluation of the scale we need this uh, uh, field computations. And similarly, in meters also. So I think these are some uh, areas where we can employ this uh, field computations. Next slide, sir. Hmm. Ravi, sir. Yeah. Yeah, in field, I mean, generally we will be interested in uh, these parameters like uh, flux density, current density, insulation level, temperature levels, mechanical structures. See, of course, mechanical, it's, it's altogether a different uh, kind of application. However, just to understand, to make you to understand, there are uh, different kind of analysis also. Like, for example, when we are giving electrical inputs, even say, for example, due to the production of electric field, there may be deformation of plates in capacitor or a deformation of uh, plates in a transformer. That means, say, this, uh, this uh, electromagnetic forces will uh, in turn cause some mechanical deformation also. So to estimate these things, uh, we conduct a coupled field analysis. That means, if we, by giving electrical inputs, we will understand the mechanical parameters also. So this uh, kind of uh, analysis, uh, it is relatively new in uh, academics, maybe in the uh, industry, they may be using in a bigger way, but uh, nowadays, uh, present generation should uh, understand the importance of field computations because it has a lot of scope for them to really use these field computations in the uh, design of various elements of a uh, power system. <coughs> Next, sir. Yeah, how it goes and all, this is the theory actually. Uh, generally, how do we solve means a simple example by solving the Laplace equation, we can understand the distribution of electric field in the capacitor. Like uh, you have two plate capacitor, parallel plate capacitor, how the field it is distributed means uh, not only in uh, just a parallel plate capacitor, but also your cable is like a, uh, it is a cylindrical capacitor kind of thing. So how to solve means by using Laplace equation. This is called the governing equation. Of course, uh, uh, this is about uh, Laplace. We uh, most of the electrical mechanical engineers they know Laplace and Poisson equation. However, when you talk about its solution, conventional differential equation solution may not uh, uh, just exactly help in all cases because depending upon the shape uh, 
and the kind of uh, materials, uh, different kinds of material involved, we need to go for uh, different numerical methods. Among these numerical methods, finite difference method and the finite element method are the most important ones. In finite difference method, the given domain region, it is uh, divided into equal and similar sized uh, elements. So there we apply the governing equation and its uh, solution repeatedly. So that uh, way we call it as boundary conditions. When we know the boundary conditions, that means like, uh, you know, on a capacitor plate, how the voltage, voltage it is acting. So by knowing the uh, particular uh, voltage uh, values, we can easily solve the field values. Like for example, how, that is, uh, principle, how the voltage or potential it is getting distributed. Uh, say for example, at four points of the capacitor, if you treat it as a rectangle, we will be knowing four corner uh, the values, and the middle point will have the average of that potential. That way, say this uh, FDM method works. However, uh, when we try to solve uh, the problems like uh, field values for the irregular boundary conditions, it's very difficult uh, to apply FDM, where the getting of, I mean, dividing the domain into equal and similar sized element, it is not possible. Then we go for the finite element method. Say most of the mechanical and the civil engineers, they use it for a structural and thermal analysis, this uh, FEM, but uh, it is just a mathematical tool. Really, it helps uh, in uh, our field competition. So if we, we are able to teach for the younger generations about this finite element method, uh, whatever the uh, Above examples, we can really have uh, many ready-made packages also, like ANSYS and uh, console, many packages are there. Using that, we can easily understand, if we really have the uh, fundamentals into fields, so we can easily apply and uh, get the solutions. I think that will help us uh, in industry and uh, even in the also to understand the exact design of many of the elements using finite element method. So these are all different uh, methods. Uh, we, uh, I just, uh, I used uh, this FEM for most of my solutions. I just don't want to get into the details of FDM and FEM much, but uh, they are the mathematical tools to solve the, the this kind of boundary value problems. Next, sir. Next, sir, uh, Ravi, sir. Yeah, this is all about FEM. In FEM, how generally things work means this uh, FM finds its applications into electrostatics. Electrostatic means, I said, uh, in high voltage engineering. Electromagnetic means in machines like a transformer or whatever, maybe the machine, uh, where we deal with the electromagnetic uh, systems, we use uh, this thing. Of course, these are the two major kind of analysis by you, I mean, applications in electrical engineering. Uh, if one <laughs> wish to take up some kind of research also, this leaves a lot of scope and all other fields of course uh, they are like uh, even into electronics also we do have applications like in designing ic's in designing mains devices we have really i mean very good uh, this thing powerful tools even as a part of uh, matlab also we are having fem lab that's called fem lab in fem lab we <laughs> we just uh, will be able to take up uh, simple problems in uh, electronics like a fiber optic cable or uh, <coughs> IC design, sorry, IC, IC design uh, evaluation. So all these kind of things can be taken up uh, by using FEMLAB, which, which is the uh, one toolbar, toolbox in the uh, MATLAB. Next, we said. <coughs> yeah, of course, uh, these are all the typical softwares, huh? uh, like uh, using ANSYS, Magnet, FEMLAB. We can really make our job easy. I mean, designing of uh, any of the problem. I mean, like uh, general mechanical engineers, they know this pre-processing and solution and as well as post-processing of uh, any kind of such a field computation problem. Say, <laughs> if we are able to um, spare one to two days uh, in any workshop, uh, okay, like in learning these uh, fact packages, we any any one of us we can easily get trained, of course. So for uh, ANSYS, of course, it gives uh, excellent solutions. In ex uh, in ANSYS, only design of intricate parts will be a little difficult. But however, for electrical, I mean electrostatic and uh, magnetic problems, uh, ANSYS, uh, of course, it's the best tool, no doubt about it. 
<laughs> because most of our uh, solution our problem solutions will be with the regular boundaries so this is all about uh, i mean various packages next is it i don't want to get into this finite element method in detail but uh, i'll just uh, try to give you some show you some solutions sir please we'll go to next slide sir so generally this fm model uh, it looks i mean just a typical uh, transformer model just i'm trying to show show you the say core part of the transformer i mean these are the some phases i mean just i'm trying to show you some glimpse of this uh, ansys uh, problem solution that's all for uh, electrical problems especially this is messing of a uh, core part and messing of uh, core and winding part generally the solution involves this finite element method uh, so in this division of uh, all those uh, i mean domain into small small elements is called uh, that small element uh, is called a finite element okay just i mean i'm trying to give you glance of the things next next yeah if you solve what kind of uh, sir previous previous diagram sir please yeah if you solve this uh, what kind of uh, information that we get uh, in the field field computation means you just to see the uh, solution uh, it is giving uh, that blue color it indicates see the flux density in that core transformer where it is the least and wherever you have other colors up to red that means from blue to red the range of values it increases see why this what we get means i said already it is it is one way it helps in calculation of stray losses and also like in rotating machines and all wherever there is a high flux density that there those are the areas which will create the more temperature at that spot that's called hot spot identification of hot spots uh, and as well as the place of uh, where to place the sensors means thermal sensors to understand the heating and uh, the kind of hot spot behavior we need to know first to predict uh, before we put that design into some implementation we need to know the location of uh, the sensors so for that uh, predictively we can use this field computations okay similarly say for example there is uh, some core area which is getting more flux density means almost so that will be the area where we will get more heat also proportionately there how to really sim uh, reduce the uh, intensity values of that field so that uh, say the material whatever we are expecting it may not behave like uh, depending upon its shape and its uh, uh, material uh, quality or characteristic uh, it will behave but uh, we don't know we expecting that material to take up so, so much of flux density we will design uh, but uh, in actual implementation maybe that shape or the material uh, characteristic that may be uh, leading to some uh, high flux intensities and high temperature developments and all so such things can be predictively known well before we just put that particular design into action so there we will have the scope in modifying the design especially these kind of things uh, it helps uh, a lot in uh, uh, design modifications which will be very economical before i mean by spending uh, lakhs and crores of rupees if you divide, if you construct a bigger uh, devices like transformers and put them in field after a normal i mean like a routine empirical test uh, and uh, if something goes wrong i think uh, it will lead to total collapse and total burning of the transformer so to avoid that such things uh, this field computation will be helping you, uh, you as a predictive tool predictive tool to bring the required modifications as per the expect i mean to get the expected performance next sir <clears throat> yeah these are all some calculations of course which may not be needed now next is it yeah i just i was telling you know that solution it gives you say some information of course here one needs to have proper knowledge whatever the solution that you have done using fm whether it is really rendering proper solution or not means by looking at its uh, flux pattern we can understand of course that is one thing and secondly from this the uh, flux plot we can also understand where and all like for example this particular uh, cross section it uh, illustrates the 
not not on not all about that core part and all our main aim is to see the three parts here if you observe this transformer core with its uh, core i mean like uh, other than core windings are there and uh, we have shown like flitch plate uh, we have shown some clamps we have shown say the stray tank part that means these are all the stray parts these are all the stray parts in the stray part parts how the flux it is really linking and how much loss it is heat loss it is causing any kind of loss that ends up in the form of heat and how it is really aggravating any hot spot points that we can predictively know well before we put this design into the action okay so i think this kind of information even once how to really avoid that hot spots how to really reduce the influence of hot spot means by using the magnetic shields magnetic shields for example the major bigger part uh, in the transformer is tank that even though tank is there for its own purpose okay um, but still it is causing unwanted heat so how to reduce that means by using some kind of shield that is the magnetic and non magnetic shields here we have shown the influence of a shield like how a magnetic shield can improve the field pattern and how it will improve the the, the hot spot influence so such things uh, we have just done i just whatever i am just uh, presenting the glimpse of my research so that uh, this will motivate uh, at least one or two uh, in the into the research in this particular fields next sir <clears throat> yeah i just uh, said no this is how the transformer model it is the created uh, just uh, uh, a tra typical transformer values i have taken with the courtesy of uh, crampton and crampton gives limited mumbai and we have designed this particular transformer to calculate the stray losses <clears throat> next sir yeah i am just uh, trying to show you it is not uh, that exact uh, modeling of uh, i need to generate but how the generator model it looks so even uh, like similar to transformer even this uh, generator is also a an electric electric device which produces i mean like uh, uh, some sort of information is required here also i was talking about that placement of uh, say some sensors and so on so because to have the online conditioning uh, to monitor the online conditioning you need to have the uh, sensors placed in it but uh, where to place the sensors for that uh, i think uh, in conventional there may be some empirical methods but then that uh, we can uh, find the exact uh, location exact placement of exact placement of the sensor when you have this uh, field pattern in your hand okay so i think just uh, this is this shows the flux pattern of uh, one typical generator next sir yeah <clears throat> this is the uh, one uh, generator room. can be modeled just uh, this is a mesh model of uh, one uh, symmetrical half symmetrical uh, generator just uh, how it looks i am just giving you an idea of uh, like uh, how the solution process it happens and uh, how the results that appears next next is uh, yeah this is how generally we model the uh, generator next is yeah this is the typical flux pattern in a four pole i mean like in four pole generator of course this is the flux model uh, uh, just for the sake of a glimpse and idea i am giving this thing. next sir yeah i am just uh, i try to just introduce uh, this uh, fields uh, in general and uh, i just uh, try to give you the sample solutions of this particular uh, models like a uh, Uh, both transformer and uh, this kind of uh, generator however there are many problems field problem i mean like uh, real time industry problems that can be solved using this uh, field uh, computations if you have any queries i will be very happy to take up sir uh, thank you chairman sir
సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ డాక్టర్ శ్రీనివాస రెడ్డి గారు ఫర్ యువర్ స్పాంటేనియస్ అక్సెప్టెన్స్ అండ్ గివింగ్ ఎ నైస్ లెక్చర్ ఎనీబడి హ్యాస్ ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్ సార్ ఐ వెల్కమ్ డాక్టర్ రమణ నాయక్ బానోత్ ఐ థింక్ నౌ ఈ జాయిన్ ఐ థింక్ hello sir any any questions please okay if no questions uh, chari garu srinivas sir chari garu i think he has left okay i request uh, dr uh, venkat sabai garu to kindly propose vote of thanks thank you sir chairman sir so it is my pleasant duty to perform vote of thanks Uh, respected eminent speaker dr v s srinivas reddy professor and principal of cmr engineering college hyderabad engineer b brahma reddy fie chairman ia telangana state center engineer g srinivas chari fie chairman ecm iit and convener of the event council members engineer m samrasa reddy garu no ma thank you dr isn ras garu ramana nayak garu Okay. Uh, past uh, presidents past vice presidents council members of iai past chairman past honorary secretaries and members of telangana state center committee corporate members of iai okay. family okay. members of dr narla tata rao representatives of media okay. ladies and gentlemen on behalf of the telangana state center of iai and on my own behalf i convey okay. our sincere and profound thanks to the okay. eminent speaker dr s srinivas reddy professor of triple e department and the principal of cmr engineering college for accepting our invitation and giving a wonderful lecture on the eve of narla tata rao endowment lecture i also thank the all the participants past presidents vice presidents council members of iai past chairman honorable past honorary secretaries committee members of iai telangana state center corporate members of iai and others who made it convenient to attend this event thank you thanks to one and all now i request all of you kindly stand for national anthem har banam munchira rudiya Can't we sing? Why should we wait? no problem if you permit i can sing janagana mana adhinayak jay he bharat bhagya vidhata पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा 
ಇಂದ್ರ ಹಿಮಾಚಲ ಯಮುನಾ ಗಂಗಾ ಉಚ್ಚಲ ಜಲಧಿ ತರಂಗ ತವ ಶುಭ ನಾಮೆ ಜಾಗೆ ತವ ಶುಭ ಆಶಿಷ ಮಾಗೆ ಗಾಹೆ ತವ ಜಯ ಗಾಧ ಜನಗಣ ಮಂಗಳದಾಯಕ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಭಾರತ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿಧಾತ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಜಯ 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 ಹೇ ಜಯ ಹಿಂದ್ ಗುಡ್ ಇಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಸರ್ ಜಯ ಹಿಂದ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಡೇ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನಮಸ್ತೆ ರಮಣ ನಾಯಕ್ ಸರ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅಣ್ಣ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಅಣ್ಣ ಜನಗಣ ಮನೆ ರಾಧ ಅಣ್ಣ ನೀ